In the NFL, concussions are under great medical scrutiny. But in U.S. high schools, athletic concussions are a growing public health concern. I was throwing up a lot. Every, every little light hurt. All my senses felt like they were just on fire. Teenagers often compete without proper medical supervision. I would love to have a trainer here every practice, every game. Some question how focused parents are on this silent danger. What's more important, saving your kids' mental health and their brain or taking care of their position on a team? Today, Outside the Lines, the looming concussion crisis in America's high schools. If the 1,700 players of the National Football League are in the crosshairs of new and vigilant scientific focus on the dangers of concussion, where does that leave the more than one million youngsters who play high school football each year? Well, the answer is often not in a very good place. Begin with the medical fact that teenagers are more susceptible than adults to concussions and consider kids may be using less sophisticated equipment and have far less medical supervision. The results, Steve Nelson reports, should concern players and their parents. The high school is Bishop Amat. The city is La Puente, California. But the scene playing out on the sideline could be happening anywhere across the U.S. Starting with October, I want you to say the month of the year backwards to me. October, September, August, June. After getting hit in the head on a punt return, Deshaun Gacy is showing signs of a concussion. Kara Au is the school's certified athletic trainer. Like the typical high school athlete, Gacy wants to get back in the game. What do you mean, can you go? go. How many people hit you? One. Wrong answer. Sweetheart, there's 27 seconds left in the game. You're not going back in. 16 Bishop Amat players have suffered concussions this season. But this is a nationwide issue. Studies show that the number of high school players who get concussions each season range from 5% to as much as 47%. When players do get concussions, many say they hide them by not reporting their symptoms. I'm one of the ones that hide it because I don't want to come out. I want to stay in, keep playing. Gabriel Flores is a junior at Bishop Amat. Since he began playing football in Pop Warner, he says he's had five concussions. With your right hand, can you tap like that? Despite their past concussions, both Chavez and Flores say they would not tell their coaches or their athletic trainer if they received another concussion this season. I would not. I, I want to stay in. I don't want to come out. Steve Siegel has been the head football coach at Schlegel High School in Kansas City for 16 years. Come on, guys. David, make a play. How good or how bad are high school football players when it comes to reporting their symptoms to their coaches? They are almost universally bad. You know, they want to stay on the field. They want to play. You know, they consider themselves invulnerable. To try and avoid concussions on his own team, Siegel says he has a rule. We see what we tackle. We see what we hit. We see what we block. You know, if I ever catch them lowering their head, they're immediately removed from the game. They're immediately removed from practice. But that rule is undermined when his players watch NFL games. NFL players, it seems to me, many of them lead with their head, whether tackling, running. No matter what I tell them, they're saying, wait a minute, look at all these guys that are professional athletes. And that's what they do. So it must be okay. Even when high school players do report their symptoms, Ow says they may play for overzealous coaches who take the matter too lightly. They want a kid you know, to get back in the game or they want a kid to get back out to practice. So they might not always recognize um, the need to treat a concussion more seriously. I think sometimes parents can be part of the problem. Dr. Brian Rieger is the director of the Sports Concussion Center at Upstate Medical University in New York. When he treats high school players with concussions, he says their parents can lose perspective. I think my son's fine. I'm not sure why we're here. He's got a game on Friday. We just need to get that taken care of. What's more important, saving your kids' mental health and their brain or taking care of their position on a team.
Six years ago, Max Conrath played quarterback and defensive end for Walport High School in Oregon. He also played special teams. Chipped up by Conrath, took it in the head too as he got run over by Warren. Max was a senior and a team captain. He was known for rarely coming off the field and for never wanting to, no matter how much punishment he took. After taking several hard hits during this game, a doctor said he suffered a concussion, but Max played the next Friday night. Back to throw, here comes the blitz, and he's going to get mauled over. Max took several more hits in that game, and then, at halftime, he collapsed unconscious on the sidelines. He spent the next two months in a coma. Throw me the ball. Throw it to me. Boy. Because his teenage brain was still not fully developed, he was more vulnerable to second impact syndrome, when a second concussion occurs before the first one has healed. Second impact syndrome can be fatal. Tell me if you need a break. Yes? Yeah. Okay. In Max's case, his brain was severely damaged, and his life forever altered. What happened? What happened? Yeah. You were hurt in a football game. What? Yeah? Yeah. Oh, my God. I had my brain injury, and, well, I want to go on with my life. Max lives today, um, at age 23, in an assisted living apartment facility. He can still go grocery shopping, but he needs help there. How long does it take you to get through the grocery store? Uh, last time, it, well, it used to take us uh, an hour and a half. Now it takes us about uh, 30 to 45 minutes. And although he says he dreams of being a writer, it isn't easy for Max to use his computer. I want to be a help to society and to me. I want to I wanna do everything that I planned on doing. If you had any advice for high school football players, what would it be? Check the date of the helmet. My helmet was 20 years old. I felt really betrayed when I found out that he had a 20-year-old helmet. Max's father, Ralph, says Max's helmet was made in 1981 and then later reconditioned. He filed a lawsuit against the company that did the reconditioning, and it was settled out of court. Conrad also says that his son's high school did not have a sufficient medical staff. There was no certified athletic trainer at the game. There was no doctor at the game. If there had been certified athletic trainers, Max would not have been practicing during that week pri prior to the, his collapse, and he wouldn't have been in that game. It isn't unusual for high school football games to be played without doctors on site. Fifty-eight percent of high schools in the U.S. do not have access to certified athletic trainers. In other words, they don't have Akira Ao, who works for Bishop Amat at every game. She's also on the field at every practice, where many concussions occur. How important is it for a high school football team to have a certified athletic trainer? It's the number one thing we're lacking. I think that our district would find ways to find the money, to be honest with you. I think there's, there's, it's not a priority. You heard the issue of older helmets being raised. Medical experts do say that even reconditioned older helmets can increase the risk of concussions. If I'm a parent, and I want my kid to go out to play high school football, assuming he's been playing. What are the things I really should know? I think every school should have a certified athletic trainer. I think that's one of the best ways to prevent and to monitor some of these uh, concussions. We can see a lot of things before they become a problem. More than half the, the high schools in this country don't have availability of, of services such as yourself, a certified athletic trainer. I firmly believe it's a priority issue. 
and that administrators and principals and parents and coaches have to work together to somehow find the money to do this. All right, Brian Robinson, appreciate your time. Next, we're going to Indianapolis. It is the perfect time.